My name is Harry Carson, and Henry Dancer was one of my best friends from the age of four until he died when we were twelve. Henry suffered from osteosarcoma, a rare form of bone cancer which, like most people, we hadn't heard of until his diagnosis. Cam, George, Joe and I wanted to share with you our story about our experiences of being Henry's close friend as he battled bone cancer at such a young age. We know firsthand how very difficult it is for families going through similar illnesses, but the shockwaves spread further still. This video tells you what it's like to experience it in one of your best mates. So guys, how did you feel when Henry was first diagnosed? I think my abiding memory of it is just not really, with hindsight, is not really understanding the magnitude of it because as you get older and you know more people who get ill you get more of an appreciation for how serious it is yeah but at the time I feel like we were so young and certainly I was fortunate enough to get to the age of sort of 10 11 and not have known that many people family or friends be that seriously ill mm. so when we did find out that Henry had cancer it didn't not that it didn't mean anything to me but I didn't really know what to make of it because yeah. We were so young, and because I didn't really know anything about it. You know, you heard about, oh, your great-granddad died of cancer, or oh, such and such did, but it's like, I never knew them, so it doesn't mean as much to you. But mm. And even the build-up to it, like, when we first knew that Henry was ill, we didn't even know it was that serious. Like, we remember him just being at school and getting, sort of being a bit uncomfortable in lessons, and, I mean... And then just one day he didn't come in and we were like, oh, right, maybe he's a bit more ill than we thought and being a bit, like, surprised because we thought he was like, oh, he'll be fine, like, it's nothing. Yeah. And then one day it was like, oh, we might have a blood clot or it might be a bit more serious. And then as the weeks went by and then he got diagnosed with cancer, it was like, oh, right, and almost felt a bit daft because at the time we were like, oh, it's probably nothing. And he'll then, be yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, <he'll> being like, <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing. Because when you're that age, it's like the worst anyone gets ill mm. is like, oh they've got a cold or yeah. oh they've cut their knee and then yeah. you start hearing all these like oh he's been to hospital it's like all right but like I say I just yeah. feel like with having not experienced anything like it up until that point you just you don't really know what to make of it until sort of years later like yeah. as we grew up and you get to know like and then even then it's almost you for me it's been like I say more with old people yeah and family friends and relatives mm. so even even now it like in context it doesn't seem quite the same because he was so young it's well just... you were only what 11 when yeah. when he was diagnosed mm. um and we'd just started secondary school so yes. there's so much going on anyway going on. like yeah. it was such a i mean it was only a few weeks in wasn't it it was like seven seven weeks seven. in we were like just because we always used to like walk in together and that was like it would have been the very first thing we heard of it other than him saying that he didn't feel great it would yeah. just be one day we weren't all walking in together yeah. uh, and there was like four of us instead of five and it's like oh right maybe he's more ill than because we all used to meet didn't we at the, at the bottom of my hill yeah we had a proper system going yeah. we had a system <laughs> going <laughs> very organised and you were always waiting for me and me and George. You were the late ones. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Jane, you always dropped Henry off at my house. Yes. Right on time. On time. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think the thing that seems crazy to me in hindsight is that I never bothered to like Google osteosarcoma. Like, yeah. even though yeah. we knew what the condition was, didn't make any effort to find out more about it. And it's mm. before the days of smartphones, I guess, Like, but we did have internet and things, yeah. but just mm. made no effort to like educate ourselves yeah. on what it was which I guess is partly why we didn't realise how serious it was because mm -hmm. if you google osteosarcoma you'd immediately you get, realize, yeah, you realize quite quickly <laughs> there's a chance he's going to die yeah, but yeah. for me at the time I'd I'd never it didn't even you. cross my mind that you just think these things don't happen to you though don't you yeah. and you're like oh wait it's not going to be it's not going to be one of my best mates Yeah, that's but. a really interesting point though because if you looked at 11 year olds now and you were talking to 11 year old you now would you want that 11 year old to google osteosarcoma not, no. absolutely not Definitely no not. way or do you think you know. would do you oh, think you would want to know it's hard isn't it because i guess if you find out earlier on oh it could be terminal be more prepared you're at least prepared for it yeah. and like i think it's just where that big blow comes isn't it 
I mean, yeah. you're kind of a blissful ignorance for... There's only the so much you can soften the blow yeah. of finding out is... Or kind of, yeah. you know, and I think, I mean, we might want to address this in a later question, but I think from your perspective, Jane, it was a way of making sure that we were still comfortable around Henry. Yes, is that, is very much right? so. Yes. Um, and I wonder whether, if we did know how serious it was when we came to visit Henry... Treat him differently. Maybe it would be more awkward and we'd be towing around subjects and things, but... Uh-huh. I don't know. It's a tricky one, isn't it? It is. It is a hard one. <laughs> so we all found out that it was primary bone cancer. Um, what did that make you feel when, when we had a, a name to call it in osteosarcoma and the fact that he, he had been diagnosed and as he went through his treatment, how, how did that feel? I think, I guess it was the start of a, a series of having to like shift expectations. Because I think when we first heard about diagnosis... It was like, oh, it'll be a few weeks and then he'll be back in school. And then it gets to a few weeks and it's like, okay, it'll be a month or so. And mm-hmm. so it's like, and I, just, I remember like my mum relaying news to me every now and again. And it's like, oh, the cancer's spread a bit further. And I'm like, oh, what does that mean? Thinking like, oh, okay, it'll just be a bit more treatment. Not really realising like yeah. Yeah. how bad things were getting until I think, I, I guess it was the moment when you suddenly have one really big operation. And there was an operation that was going to take like, was it 12 hours or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think maybe that was one of the points where I started to realise like just how serious it was. Maybe not to the extent of thinking it might be terminal, but mm. um, I think, yeah, I remember being kind of punctuated by those moments where, oh, no, it's got worse. Oh, it's got worse. But I, I think throughout that, I was always of the mind like, oh, it's going to be a bit longer now, but oh how great will it be when he finally comes back to school me too right? that's exactly yeah. the same yeah. yeah like imagining that day where oh he's going to come in and it's going to be like big it was always in the context of like school life for yeah. us wasn't uh-huh. it in yeah. terms of measuring how long he'd been gone yeah. yeah it wasn't like how ill has he been it was like how much school has he missed yeah like, yeah because <laughs> yeah, we just wanted our friend back didn't we to like do fun mm. stuff with so mm. I guess that's the lens that we processed it through um I guess alongside that we had the the visits as well um which a lot of them ended up being in this room yes um, that's very true <laughs> a picture of us all yeah, on that yeah, that's right. yeah um I guess my main memory from them is just like playing FIFA on the Xbox yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. um like there were things I look that I looked forward to those visits which mm-hmm. I guess was a good thing like yeah it could have very easily been like a um, something you were worried about. It's like, oh, mm. what's Henry going to be like this time? Yeah. Whereas I think I was always, I was just excited to see him. Mm. And I knew that partly because of the cancer, he got good games. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> there was some free stuff involved. <laughs> and just being like, oh, great, I get to play that game. Uh, <laughs> um, you were all really, really natural with him. And it was as if... In some ways, nothing had changed. Well, nothing had changed regarding your friendship with him. Uh-huh. Obviously, he looked different yeah, yeah. Um, because he lost his hair, he lost his eyelashes, his leg was a huge issue. Um, what made? <laughs> Did it feel okay seeing him looking different? I think most of the time it was fine. I don't remember being like shocked. I think maybe, like, our parents probably, like, prepared us for that. I was like, oh, he's going to look different. So we probably had that in our minds already. Um, Mm. But to be fair, it was also... He was so busy in and out of hospital. We would go such long gaps in between seeing him. It wasn't all... You weren't always going to see him with, like, a picture in your head of what he looked like last time because it had been so long since you'd seen him. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was almost not as much of a shock when he looked different because you hadn't seen him in so long you, not that you didn't remember what he looked like no. but it was almost it's not as if it was overnight he suddenly looked different it was like right. you knew there had been a period of time since you'd last seen him and like Cameron was saying before you'd heard all these different things you'd been going through going sort of into hospital for operations and being changed to different types of mm. therapy and different treatments so you knew that there was going to be sort of different stuff going on yeah. Yeah. each time you saw him I think for me it was like when when we actually visited him in the hospital itself uh-huh. um, the combination of seeing him without his hair like he looked really pale yes and like not healthy um, and 
yeah, you, you didn't have to be a doctor to see that he wasn't okay, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and I remember just the environment of being in the hospital and going to see him, like, lying down. Um, and specifically for his, regarding, like, his treatment plan and stuff, I remember him taking, like, one of these pills that must have been, like, maybe his chemotherapy or something, but it's some treatment and the the pill was like that big it was like a, it Huge. was like one of them torpedo yeah. sweets that were like gigantic and I'm like I, I was struggling to have paracetamol I was like still on <laughs> cow <cowboy. laughs> <laughs> and I remember just thinking flipping heck like how's but the thing is he wasn't phased at all so he had obviously yeah. just become and you weren't phased and yeah. Gary wasn't phased so it almost become a norm to you and you'd just be, it'd yes. become a normal thing of taking drugs like that um yeah which is crazy to think that you just become sensitized to that it's absolutely right because we didn't even realize that we were sensitized to it that we, it mm-hmm. was just we knew it had to be done so you got on with it and i mean one of the lovely things i i remember about during his treatment was the laughter it was the one time we heard Henry laugh was when you were visiting either in hospital or, or at home and seeing a, a sort of shadow of what he'd been previously and that was so, so precious. It, it really, really mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things I remember from the visits was it was almost like being on call, wasn't it? Because yes. it was like, it, it was so dependent on how he felt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was like yeah. one week you might think you were going to go on a visit, but then he had a bad day. That's right. So you had to cancel yeah. it. Yeah. Or kind of, you had no idea, but it was always like, oh, having a good day. Let's get a visit from one of his friends. But then the kind of like, who got to go? Because yeah. there weren't that many times where we all got to see him at the same time. Yeah. That so was, was always difficult because I didn't want to feel I was being unfair yeah. to any of you. But if you remember, Cam, there was there was one point you were going to come for Sunday lunch, and we just had to cancel at the last yeah. minute because we'd had to whisk him into hospital. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess sometimes like finding out that oh, George had been to visit him a few days ago, and I was like, oh, I haven't seen him for ages. Yeah, and like yeah. oh, a little bit of jealousy, well, I guess. Yeah. Between that's not fair. My yeah. slot got cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I remember Joe once being unwell when when you were due to come for visit, and you apologising for not being able to come up mm. but we were so appreciative I can't remember whether it was a cold or what but his immune system was compromised yeah, and exactly. you and your family had been sensible enough to, to recognise that and, mm-hmm. but that you apologised anyway yeah, which is, yeah. <laughs> is sorry I can't come and see him <laughs> yeah. self-isolating before it was cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly. you were all told that we were going to lose Henry at the same time in your individual homes by your parents because we all wanted to make sure that nobody knew something before somebody else. Um, so I suppose there are two sides to this. One, how did you feel when you were told he was going to die? And two, what was it like to lose a good friend? Yeah, I guess for me, going back on what we touched on earlier, I always had this weird um, hope that it was just going to be okay and that we kept having these setbacks of oh he's going to miss another few months of school Mm -hmm. but then we were always thinking oh wait we'll see him in year eight then I guess it's weird that he's going to miss year seven but like it's fine we'll see him in year eight so when I actually heard that he wasn't going to make it I think subconsciously maybe part of me did already know that it was heading that way but I wasn't really kind of accepting it if yeah. you know what I mean yeah. but when I remember my mum telling me um, upstairs in my house um, and just like um, just basically blowing up emotionally yeah. Um, and I basically ran into our bathroom and just locked the door and was just like absolutely sobbing oh. um, and yeah I, I think yeah that's probably like the most sad and just shocked that I'd been up until that point in my Mm. life um it was almost as if time had kind of like slowed down (laughs) and like I I was just there like like life isn't gonna continue if you know what I mean but yeah it, it was tough 
um, and I remember my mum just like crying as well and just like yeah it was I don't I think, know what your experience yeah, for well. me the finding out it was terminal is one of the most vivid memories I have from the whole sort of year mm. from sort of when he was first ill right up until he died uh. it's between like that and the last time I saw him I would say my two most that stick in my head the most because I remember like Jane was saying how we tr- made sure to coordinate that we all found out at the same time mm-hmm. across the four of us lads even then within that in my house with my three siblings we also obviously mum and dad were like we've got to sit them all down at the same time gosh yeah was it the same so then time? I can picture being sat at the kitchen table and like it was pretty manic in the house when we were all like school <laughs> age anyway yeah, yeah. So then, like, you knew something was up because they managed to actually get all four of us sat down at the kitchen <laughs> table. Right. And then Short I remember, like, they had, and being told, like, oh, we're all going to sit down when your dad gets in from work and being like, oh, Why? man. <laughs> yeah. And then only when we actually sat down and sort of dad walked in and was, like, really stern, I was like, something's up. Mm. And then, yeah, kind of the same as what you said, just wasn't expecting it because we were just so sort of naive about it we just assumed you like, were young we were just yeah. like oh yeah I'll be back at school eventually it's just taken a while yeah. and then just being like oh right no he's mm-hmm. not Sorry. coming back to school yeah. but I don't think I was I don't remember being upset I just remember just being sort of blown away by it and just not knowing at all what to make of it and just going upstairs and sitting in my room and literally just being sat there and just being like I just don't know like mm. I was just totally yeah. Didn't know what to do or what to think. I was like, I didn't want to stay downstairs. I didn't want to be with anyone else, mum and dad. I was just like, I'm going to sit by myself because <laughs> I do not know what's going on. Yeah. I was just like, I do not like, just, yeah, I just didn't know what to make of it. It was just so weird. Mm. And then after a while, I remember being a bit annoyed because obviously you start to click on that your parents knew before, before. you. And then yeah. being like, yeah. oh, well, how long have they known? And then being yeah. like... But before any of that saying, I just remember overwhelmed and just not knowing what to make of it at all and just being sat there, just like... Because mum and dad were, oh, if you want to talk about it and all this, yeah. and I was just like, I don't even know what I would say. I was just like, sat there. Just yeah. like, it's knowing which know. questions to ask. And as fundamentally a child, which you were at that time, you don't know what the questions are, do no. you? Yeah. I, I feel so can. sorry for my parents now because like, I was, that was more like Joe. Like, I was totally inconsolable, like you know, crying my eyes out for hours, and like, oh, I can't imagine as a parent like so there's nothing not. you can do. Like yeah. Yeah. you can't say it's okay. It's also yeah. not okay. Like, but oh yeah, I yeah, it's probably one of the one of the hardest few hours that I've ever gone through. Yeah, like um, I don't know about you guys, but I found that finding out that it was terminal much worse than the find yeah. out that he died because yeah just, yeah that's the point where you've got to readjust it like flips yeah, yeah mm-hmm. readjust your expectations and um i and agree then. i mean the, i <clears throat> obviously we were delivered a lot of bad news in one year all of us um and as henry's mum i agree with you that the di- the terminal diagnosis was in some ways worse than his death because that was such a big hit and from then on, it was really dealing with making the end as comfortable as 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 possible mm-hmm. for Henry. But that that was a a big a big day, and mm-hmm. we we took some flack at that time from other people um, who felt that we should be telling everybody everything all the way through. Um, but as you said earlier, we wanted to make sure that you were all the same with Henry for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very easy for other people to be critical or think you're handling things in the wrong way and I think parents have just got to deal with the, with the way they feel is right as long as you're not hurting other people with it you've got to just go with the flow mm-hmm. once he'd gone um, obviously you were all involved in his funeral um, and in the services at school that, that St Bede's did Um I'm going to go into a further question now, actually. Did you feel that we, as parents and the school, got it right? Or were there things we could have improved upon in the way we supported you throughout the whole thing? I think the, the school were very understanding, certainly, 
in the immediate aftermath the kind of like so I, I couldn't go into school the day after we found out um that he was going to die and but that was absolutely fine like I didn't have to worry about being told off or anything like that and mm. um we were given use of the the chapel at school was that was that after he died or was that throughout the I think that was throughout earlier the process I, I can't remember um but. I remember going up I think it was throughout mm. I think it was throughout the tree we used to go up quite a lot we did during break time, probably times. made too much use of it, really, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just used it as our own little like. <laughs> oh, it's really inside. Let's go to the chapel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. No one else can go there. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was really useful. Like we didn't have to worry about being told off about anything. Like we we were allowed the space to to process it how we wanted to process it, mm-hmm. um, which was really useful. Yeah. And what remember? what about his parents? Um, I'm not asking you to be critical, of, <laughs> but I think for other people, if, if there is something that we, we didn't get right, what, or what was most important to you that, that we as parents did throughout treatment and when he died? I think with hindsight, telling us when you did that it was terminal, and like you say, or not telling us things so that we had better memories of him, mm-hmm. was a good thing. But like I say, at the time, I probably didn't think it was a good thing because I felt like, well, we should have been told and like, just being like, I can't believe we've just been... But I think that was just the sort of shock of finding out. I still think that like, overall, I think it was probably best. And especially telling us at the same time to feel like the news by itself is big enough. But then how you find out is like, if you find out just from someone else or if Mm. someone... Oh, yeah. Like yeah. that could change everything. Mm. I think just the yeah. fact that we managed yeah. to actually coordinate everyone sitting that down and finding out at the same me. time, and then everyone knowing, like having your mum and dad sit you down and say, you know, the other lads are finding out tonight as well. Uh-huh. Yes. And I always feeling took a bit like, of it off, yeah, it? being like, like, oh well, who, do I need to tell anyone? Like, oh, does anyone know? Like, mm. who can I talk to about this? Yeah, it's like shared yeah. experience, isn't it? Because like I was like, oh well, um feeling rubbish crying in my bathroom but I know Cam and George are probably doing the same yeah. thing if you know what I mean yeah. um, and you were talking weren't you about um, sort of the time after Henry had died and just sort of all like reminiscing together and being able to sort of be in a form class and speak talk about like memories and stuff weren't you like, yeah well, it's one of the classic things with a lot of grief, isn't it? That you kind of, you feel guilty about feeling happy and you're like, oh, I, I shouldn't feel happy yeah. again. Yeah, I remember us all laughing and yeah. just laughing at moments that we had together and it just mm-hmm. taken so much of the yeah. seriousness And then out. that morning, which was, yeah, I think it was the morning after he died. Um, yeah, and we all got together and I think, yeah, for me, that was such a, like, a holy moment that like, it, it was like the shackles were off and we were just happy to laugh, to laugh again. And from that mm. moment, I felt like, oh, it's still really, really hard. But, like, I knew that it was okay to be, to laugh and to, to be happy. Um, Life will big, go on, if you know what I mean. Yeah. There's still hope. And, um, so in that way, yeah. like, you know, having our friendship and the way that that, that brought us together stronger. Like, you know, at mm. the time, like, we weren't, I think, you know, with you, Joe, particularly, like, we're maybe going apart a little bit. Yeah in the immediate aftermath of Henry's death that like brought, brought us, us all much together, closer together didn't it yeah. and that's lasted to this day so and even with you I guess, I guess as well like the years following us sort of still remaining yeah almost like a unit of friends like we lost Henry but then like you kind of like joined Sketchy. that crew didn't you <laughs> <laughs> well I'd like um, to think that yeah, yeah. Um, I remember the first time coming up here with Henry not being here uh-huh. Yeah, because I remember even now when I look back for years, I never, I've really, I like, I never clocked it. But as a kid, it was always this is Henry's house, uh-huh. and then it was like a few, good few years before it started coming on to being like, oh, we're going up to Jane's, Jane's house. house, and then be like, it's yeah. Jane's house, and stuff. yeah, and being yeah. like, and then it took us a while to even notice it because it happened sort of naturally. It was yeah. like, oh, we're going up to Jane's, and then one day realizing like. That used to be Henry's house. So why have I mm. called it Jane's house? And then yeah. be like, oh, because it's ah, yeah, no, Jane's no. house. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. like, as a kid, you always like, I'm going to Cameron's house. I'm yeah, of course. Like, yeah, to yeah. That's Henry's yeah. house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then just like, realise one day, like, oh, it's 
I'm just going to hang out with Jane. That's a bit weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. still a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> Fair comment. <laughs> but I remember, yeah, the first time coming in and like walking through here and just being like, "This is really weird." weird. Like, yeah. yeah, she's not there. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit. Yeah, go on, come. On. Yeah, go. backtracking a little bit, but just why, why it's popped into my head into it's something that'll probably be useful for other people navigating it. Is the, the the way that different people process grief. Mm-hmm. And I think from what we've said, it sounds like me and Joe are probably quite similar in that we we just cried and yeah, were inconsolable. Emotionally, mm-hmm. yeah. Whereas I remember at the time that because I felt like I couldn't go into school the next day, or I think I might have gone in, not gone in for the morning, and gone in the afternoon, mm-hmm. the day after we heard it was terminal, and like you seemed fine, and that was yeah. like I couldn't understand that. I was like, how can you just go about and like. So I just went in on happening. the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I just presume the old way of processing it was almost to like shift it to one was, side. Yeah, I was like, going to say I was so much slower. Even I know you said before by like taking part in the funeral, and we each wanted to like say something, but I was like, like I remember you was it you two spoke. Yes, but I was like me and Harry. I didn't yeah. speak. Yeah. Harry, I remember being yeah, like, speak. no way, like. Obviously, like I think I I wrote something for someone else to read out, That's but right. I was yeah, like, me too. I was like, I don't, I'm not reading something out. And then at the, being there at the time, and being like, oh, maybe I should have done. But then just being like, just even that, just being like, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable talking about it, even by the time the funeral came round. Mm-hmm. And like, I think I just was so much because it was more just shock and not being able to like comprehend it Mm -hmm. throughout the whole thing really even before like he died I think just that's when I look back it was just not getting any of it at all like the sort of scale of what was going on yeah when he was like ill and then when it was terminal and then even after he died just in not really sinking in Mm -hmm. until things afterwards like coming back to the house and like and then like first time I went into his bedroom like one day when we were up here and being like flipping it like and then yeah I think I was just totally different like you say it didn't hit me like a train when I found out it just sort of gradually gradually sort of wore out Mm -hmm. and I was like oh Mm. so linking back to I guess the question you asked about what parents might have done differently I think for me I think there was a lot of emphasis on like how I was processing it Mm. but being told that you know people process grief in different ways like your friends useful. aren't going to be feeling exactly the same, same way as you yeah mm. yeah, yeah. That would have and it's not because they don't care exactly not, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that would have stopped me being a bit annoyed at you <laughs> <laughs> so obviously after all that difficulty and horrible times um there have been positives that have, have come out of it all um one of them was setting up henry's charity henry dancer days um, and we've now supported nearly 700 families um, with grants um, for support and hardship. Um, and also the storytelling project that goes into lots of hospitals mm. for children with all forms of cancer. And you guys have been amazing in the sort of support that you've given. I mean, it, the, goodness, there are too many to mention, really. There's been Coast to Coast sponsored swims, sponsored tennis events. What else have you all done? Great North Runs. Great North oh, North yeah, Runs. Great North Runs. Great North Runs. Yeah. yeah, and Cameron actually worked for the charity for six months at one point, fundraising very successfully. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, what does it feel? You know, once he went, there's there's still something going in his name. What what does that feel like to you? It's just weird. Like, I think it's just how sort of widespread it is. Like when it, I remember sort of when you started it, it was just like almost just like in the village, sort of people who knew him. Yeah. It was just like mm-hmm. a little thing, but then when you look at it now, like you say, how many, even just the number of people who you managed to actually help and support, it's like, oh wow, it's actually quite a big Pretty thing. Big. Like, Take and all of this has got his name like plastered on it. Yeah, like, cool. Yeah. Like, and like you say, it's also, it's, it's not just like the only way we remember him, but it's always whenever we meet up, and it's just like you because know, you're always doing the charity stuff. Yeah. You always end up talking about Henry Dancer Days and then we always get on to talking about Henry. Yeah. Mm. So then we never sort of run out of stuff to like talk about. We always end up talking about something about back in the day, like when we used to go to school together or <laughs> yeah, when we used no, to have yeah. sleepovers together. It's just like 
it's a great it's a great comfort because to me it keeps his name alive and yeah. that, that's an important thing mm. but another side of it another very big positive very big plus certainly personally um has been the fact that we've become friends and it, it, it feels <laughs> Really weird. George was saying earlier about coming to Jane's house rather than Henry's house. <laughs> and that is bizarre because, you know, as a wrinkly to have friends who are your age. <laughs> well done, I like that. <laughs> um, it's, it's great to have kept in touch with you. And I, I sometimes think because it's because Henry and I have a similar sense of humour. And that kind of fits in with your... Yeah. It also shows what... A, Great choice he had in mates, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) And I think for a lot of families, it's quite hard to retain friendships with. um, (laughs) So, uh, quite hard to retain friendships with their child's friends. And I'm eternally grateful to your families for ensuring that 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 was possible. Um, I'm thinking of. Hut nights we've had, unofficial 21st in the social club. Um, we, we've had some, some good oh, times. Some good times. Yeah. yeah. I think the best thing about it, for me, is that it, it doesn't feel weird. I guess when you stop and think about it, it's quite a weird... It's a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one else has this kind of thing going yeah. on. Um, but like, yeah, as you say, I think that's a wonderful testament to Henry and kind of um, what you've done with the charity uh, through it and, and how we've all been able to stay friends and I think it's a mm. yeah a great tribute to him I guess that yeah that we can still do this and it means that through through meeting up that because we reminisce about him and the good times we have that that keeps his memory alive and I think mm. in, in one way like it helps uh, me to, to process that grief like just talking about things and like it means that you have the chance to talk about your friend who you lost mm. whereas I think if we didn't have this I maybe wouldn't oh have God. those natural conversations where yeah. I could just talk about yeah. talk about Henry like outside of kind of yeah. this group don't really talk about him that much no. No. Um, and I'm sure that other people who have lost friends who don't have this kind of friendship maybe don't mm. get that chance uh, yeah. do you find it quite hard to because I remember at one point Jane I think you shared a newspaper article um that sort of explains what happened to Henry and our friendship and stuff. Yeah. I remember you shared that and like tagged us in it. And I remember a lot of people that, that I was friends with at university sort of saw it and didn't like have any idea that that had happened. Nice. Okay. Um, and they were all just like, I think, I think at least two people were like crying when they were talking to us oh about it and being goodness. like, like it's so amazing. Um, like the charity and how you have stayed friends and things but it's one of them it's one of them topics that I don't think I would go and introduce myself to a new person be like I'm friends with a crazy old woman yeah <laughs> and like yeah <laughs> it's like he said it not me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's it's one of them things where like how do you oh yeah my, one of my best mates died of cancer mm. it's like yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's heavy it's yeah. really heavy so it, but for us chatting about it it's a good outlet because and it's all, very natural as well all, that we we've do. all been yeah. there um yeah. but i with my new certainly with my new friends at university i i don't speak i wouldn't tell them unless something like the shared post they unless saw it, it up. yeah, yeah. Just because yeah. it looks, I don't know, it, it just wouldn't... Yeah, I think it's like what true. Cam was saying, how it's literally, with anyone else, it would be a bit weird to talk about it. But because with us and Jane, it's literally like the reason yeah. we're friends. It's like, uh-huh. with anyone else, even when it's just the four of us without Jane, we have other things in common, like, outside of Henry. But whenever we're with Jane, it's literally like that was what... Mm-hmm. We still, like, at the end of the day, we know he was Henry's mum. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. that's why I think it always comes more naturally to talk about it when we're all together because yeah. although now we're like friends with Jane she's not just Henry's mum you are still kind of just Henry's mum yeah. <laughs> and it's a title I'm very happy to retain uh-huh. it's, yeah. cool. we all like a drink as well that's all in common isn't it <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll stop there. Can't put that in. Oh, we've gone all night. All right, let's start again. No, I think we've gone all night.
Everyone just goes silent. Yeah, I think we just start. We all like a drink. I just cut that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I should mention that besides the friendship that we now enjoy with Jane, we all decided to make her our godmother when we turned 18. Not only is she now our weird friend, but we call her FG, our fairy godmother. We'll all continue to do our part in supporting Henry's charity, Henry Dancer Days. Thank you.